Hi everybody, it's Sandra. So I have to do a part two of my favorite finds for 2021. You know, I have so much jewelry that I haven't yet organized. And by the way, if you wanna see what my organizing system is, I do have a video out on that and just in case anybody's interested. But I've been organizing my jewelry and I found all these pieces and I was like, this is my favorite and this one's my favorite too. So we're gonna have a look at some more of my favorite pieces that I bought in 2021. Thanks so much for coming everybody, let's go. I love Victorian jewelry, and I think this is just the sweetest little piece. This is silver, I'm sure you can tell that. And it has a little window over here, this little compartment. So this is removable, and then you can put something in there like a lock of hair, or a four leaf clover, or whatever. You know, probably a lock of hair. So this is our tube hinge right here and this is called a C-clasp. I will be doing a show on Victorian jewelry too soon, I promise. So this is definitely one of my favorite pieces, and I love, I just love this part right here for hair. That's gorgeous. Look at this beautiful little Morpho butterfly pin. I love this. So this is Lucite. I mean, I guess we could argue, is it actually Lucite? Because Lucite is actually a very specific thing. It was invented by the DuPont company in 1931. It became very, very popular, however, in the 1940s and 50s. So, you know, it just has sort of become this popular nickname for it. I mean, I always call clear plastic Lucite. And this is kind of the first one I've ever seen like this with the, a bird on it and roses. I think that's really, really sweet. I collect hand jewelry. I am so excited to have this in my collection. I think this is just beautiful. It's very sort of delicate and I, I can't believe that these fingers have not broken off. So this is not ivory. You see these black marks here. Those are called Herversion canals and that is a sign of bone. Ivory will not have these black specks. So that's how we know this is bone. I guess this was probably made to hang from a necklace. It looks like maybe it had a ring on in the day, not sure, but there is a little notch on that finger and I don't know, maybe it had a bracelet too. But I think this is really cool. I love this, I love hand jewelry and I do have a video on it in case anyone's interested in hand jewelry the way I am. And I'll show you uh, another one I got too. This is Victorian. This is a gorgeous cuff bracelet and look at the hand holding the, the vine, you know, the forget-me-nots. I have seen this sort of um, motif in mourning jewelry before. It does say Myrtle on it, so I call her Myrtle, M-Y-R-T-L-E. Now I couldn't find any comps, but interestingly, I did find like napkin rings, believe it or not, that has this same like pattern on it, but I don't think this would have been a napkin ring. I mean, it really does look like a cuff bracelet. It doesn't look like this was cut or bent uh, you know, but you never know. It doesn't matter. I really do love this bracelet. So this is Myrtle, in case you haven't met her before. Really cool item. I got this one last year. I love the height on this one. I just love the colors, too. And it's just in such great condition. And I think this is outstanding. I love this one. And I think I have another one. Um, I have to dig that one out. I know I have it somewhere. I mean, it would be in with my rhinestone jewelry, but... I think that's, there's just something very, very charming about this one. I found these two items at an auction and I didn't know what they were. I was just very, very attracted to them. I mean, I figured those were little coral beads, but this is actually something from China and it's called Tianxiu. These are antique pieces and let's take a look at what Wikipedia says about Tianxiu. It is a style of Chinese art featuring kingfisher feathers. For 2000 years, the Chinese have been using the iridescent blue feathers of kingfisher birds as an inlay for fine art objects and adornment, from hairpins, headdresses, and fans to panels and screens. Kingfisher art is relatively unknown outside of China. Kingfisher feathers are painstakingly cut and glued onto gilt silver. The effect is like cloisonne, but no enamel was able to rival the electric blue color. Blue is the traditional favorite color in China. 
As with most iridescent electrifying colors in animals such as morpho butterfly wings, the intense color in bird feathers comes not from pigments in the feather itself, but from the way light is bent and reflected back out, much like a prism breaks white light into its spectrum of rainbow colors. Kingfisher feathers were found in tropical areas of Asia and, and other areas as well, but let's see if we can really have a look. Can you see those are feathers? Isn't that amazing? Now, I have to give a big shout out to one of my YouTube viewers. I was showing this as a haul video like a few weeks ago, and somebody said, hey, those are kingfisher feathers. Did you know that? And I had never even heard of such a thing. So I really wanted to share this so that if you see them, you will know what they are. Now, I bought both, both of these pieces together, and you can see this is just regular old enameling. Same coral beads, though but this is our kingfisher feathers. Very, very interesting pieces. I can't remember what I paid for these. I did get them at an auction. I don't think I paid that much for them. And it's just some pretty cool information to have. So thank you so much, whoever told me that. I really appreciate that information. This kind of jewelry right here is really my thing. I just absolutely love this. Now I bought this from a private collector. I went to her home and as she was carrying this over to me, she dropped it on the floor and it did break, which is terribly upsetting. But you can see here, this is, uh, I don't think there's hair in there. I actually think that's just like that matte thing that's gonna hold hair. This is a very, very beautiful morning piece. You know, we would, we would assume this is a morning piece. So when we talk about hair jewelry, there are people who really like to argue that you can never prove that it was actually a morning piece because it could just be a keepsake. You know, in those days, if you think about it, you couldn't carry around pictures of people on your iPhone, you know? This one is definitely a morning piece because of the black and also because of these little seed pearls. The Victorians were very, very big on symbolism and these little seed pearls in Victorian times represented tears. So how sweet is that? What a lovely piece. I'm so sorry that glass broke. You know, I probably could get that replaced actually. But this is a very, very lovely piece. This isn't gold, it's only gold plated. You can see here, right? This discoloration, you always look on like the wear lines where somebody would be grabbing this all the time and you can see where the gold is kind of uh, rubbing off. I think this is just the sweetest, sweetest little piece. Now we're gonna have a look at another really beautiful antique pin. How about this one? Isn't this lovely? This is not jet, this is French jet, which is uh, glass, but this too has the tiny seed pearls. It is black. I think this back might be a replacement here. Um, mm, yeah, it looks it, right? But this is in really, really beautiful condition. It looks kind of like it's, it's almost never been handled. I mean, my fingerprints are on it because I put hand lotion on, but what a beautiful, beautiful piece. I love bar pins, and I just think this is the sweetest thing ever. Here's one I got from the jewelry store haul. Look at that pink. Isn't that amazing? This is such a beautiful, beautiful old necklace. This looks like it's 1920s, um, maybe 1930s. It might be as new as the 40s, but it is so delicate and so pretty. It is sterling silver too, which is just an added plus. But look at the condition. It just, it looks like it's never been worn. And I think that is just such a, it's just incredibly, incredibly beautiful. Some people may have seen my J. King haul. It was at an estate sale and they had a lot of QVC and really mostly J. King jewelry, which is Desert Rose Trading, which was sold on either HSN or QVC. And um, of all the pieces that I got, I have a couple of one, a couple of keepers. This is definitely a keeper. I just love this. It's sterling silver and turquoise. And I love this necklace. Isn't this nice? It is marked here um, and it has a magnetic closure, but it, it does say Desert Rose Trading there. Can you see it? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but I love this and now it was new in the box and I don't really have that much turquoise. I don't really see it that much in the Northeast and I think this is just a beautiful and stunning piece. I bought these beautiful bracelets at a community yard sale and 
I think that these are incredible. So this is sterling and turquoise, and they are marked right there, HOB Mexico 925. So HOB is for a company called House of Bangles. You know, again, I don't have many pieces of turquoise in my collection, and I, I just think these are gorgeous. They're very, very heavy, very, very nicely made. Love this bezel setting, right? I think that's just completely beautiful. So it's really nice that I have a pair of them too. I have been enjoying wearing these. I love these bangles. This brooch is kind of epic, don't you think? Look at that blue and green. What a beautiful piece this is. The condition is just so outstanding, you know? I, I don't know. I mean, I did buy it from a jewelry store, uh, but it just seems like it has no handling wear, which is kind of crazy. I mean, I have lots and lots of rhinestone jewelry. I've seen a lot of it. I've sold a lot of it. There is usually some wear, little, little scratches somewhere, but this one is just perfect. Love that. Don't forget to tell me what your favorite pieces are below, by the way. I'd love to hear that from you. I got this little bulldog ring at a, I don't know what you would call it. It was sort of an art gallery and they had like a jewelry show kind of thing. I didn't pay that much for it, like maybe $20 or something. But I think this is a really beautiful 1930s, I guess like gumball machine ring. It's really, really cheap, but the tongue sticks out, which I think is really fun. It goes back in and then you just press the back here or when it's on your finger, I guess you could stick the tongue in and out. <laughs> How cute is that thing? Oh, I love this ring. It's really small. I don't know if it was made to go on a child or not, but you have to have really tiny fingers. But I think that's quite, <laughs> quite an interesting little bulldog, right? Now I found this in a boutique and this lady apparently knows a lot about like Louis Vuitton bags and shoes and clothing and she sells jewelry a little bit. So she had these pouches of jewelry that were, you could open them, you know, it wasn't like they were sealed, but they were just pouches of junk jewelry and they were $5 for a pouch. But you can see what she did. That just says gold fill. So she probably took a look at it and she said, oh, it's gold filled and she stuck it in the pouch of junk. But this is actually real gold, this pendant part. So I just think that's something that we should always remember that these things get switched out all the time. So somebody had a gold pendant and then just stuck it on this necklace. So she didn't know that, you know, she just made the assumption that this was just gold filled, but this is actually gold. I think this is solid 10 karat gold. I bought this from that same private collector where I got actually the whole Leah Stein collection and then that other morning piece I was showing you before, the one that she dropped. This is beautiful. <laughs> I love this. This, and this is a super, super cool critter. And oh, that prong, I gotta fix that prong. Yeah, so I'll probably take like um, uh, a pencil eraser or something like that and try to very gently get that prong back in place. I don't like that. I don't want to lose that stone. This is a nice old, old piece. I got to clean it. I still haven't cleaned it. It's a little bit grimy. This is very 1940s. It's in really nice condition. Isn't that lovely? Such a pretty design, I think, from days gone by. She was only asking $20 for that in her shop. That's not what I paid. I did pay less, you know, but isn't that so pretty? I love this one. I really do. I think it's just sort of tasteful. Just a few blue rhinestones. Just lovely. For some reason, I found a lot of Uncas rings this year. I don't think I can probably get the signature for you, but it's a U with an arrow through it. Let's see if we can dig it out here. Yeah, there it is. Okay. You see, it's like a, a U with an arrow. Well, this is beautiful. And Uncas became this big costume jewelry ring company. And they really hit their stride in the 1950s. This one, I think, is earlier. Now, they did start out in 1911. They're still in business today, by the way. And they were based in Providence, Rhode Island. And I don't know what it is about this thing. I think it's that high setting. I just really, really love this. I think this is an early one, and I think it's a stunning, stunning little ring. Here's an interesting and unusual pair of earrings. I think I've only had one other pair of these. 
So these are called wing back earrings and they were designed by a woman named Judith McCann. She started out working for a department store called G Fox in Harford, Connecticut. And then she moved to New York City. Let me just see if I can get that signature. I'm not gonna be able to get that, but that says wing back and then there's a patent number. So what she set out to do was to make earrings where you didn't have to have pierced ears, but that would be comfortable and not kill your earlobe. How it works is this part here, which is referred to as the wing, would actually go inside your ear and sort of um, stay in there. And so they're comfortable to wear, actually. I like these. I think they're just sort of a curiosity. I don't think they ever really quite caught on. So I wanted to just show these for you because I got them last year and they are wing back earrings. My mom loves to pick up jewelry and she loves to pick it up for me. She found these in a thrift store. They are silver and they are designed by a designer named Ed Levin. So these are very cool. He was New York City based. These are probably from the 50s, uh, maybe from the 60s. Super, super cool, modernist, love these. I have worn these already. And I think these are just super, super interesting, very unusual. These earrings are unusual too. I just love the their whiteness, if that makes sense, just white and clear. And I think there's something very striking about them. This part is Moon Glow Thermoset with a very beautiful sort of highly faceted Rivoli rhinestone in each center. Clip-on earrings. I love this little pin. I think this is really sweet. This is actually glass. It's curved a little bit. Isn't that so nice? Nice little four leaf clover in there. This one looks like it's from the 30s or the 40s. I think that's a darling little thing. And here's another one that I would put in the 30s or the 40s. Look at this, hand painted a little rosettes. This is just such a sweet little bracelet almost in perfect condition, a little bit of loss right there. I think that's so girly and it's just so pretty. In my last video, when I was picking out my favorite stick pins, I forgot this one is one of my favorite stick pins that I got from that bunch. I love this antique skull and crossbones. I don't think that eye is age appropriate for him, but I don't know because it actually is glass. I just think the cut of that looks more modern. Uh, but I have to take that out anyhow because I have to put a matching pair. So I'll try to find some old stones that are age appropriate that will fit in there. So I think that's a really awesome stick pin. Look at this amber necklace. Now I got this one at that community yard sale. This is a great thing to look out for because people see this and they just think they're plastic, you know, and people don't understand. I mean, we know, we know that these are valuable they do pass all of the amber tests, including the float test and the black light test, which maybe we should do that. Let me get my black light. I turned off the lights so it would be a little bit easier to see. Whoa, look at those glow. Really very, very beautiful amber beads. These are some of the nicest ones I've seen. First of all, this necklace is really long, which is great, and they're knotted in between each one. Now, the reason that they would knot beads like this, and pearls often too, is just so if you ever broke this, you wouldn't lose all of your beads, you know, and it holds them in place. Beautiful, beautiful amber. Well, thank you again so much for coming to my video today. I hope to catch you soon. Please leave me a comment below. Like this video if you did like it and consider subscribing to my channel. It's free for you to do and it would really help me out a lot. Thanks again, everybody. I will see you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.